Hello everyone, welcome to class. So please let me know if uh, I am audible and visible. I hope I am audible and visible and the presentation is uh, visible to all of you. Okay, so let us start. So today's short session on MCQs. This is uh, going to be a short session of revision MCQs for the upcoming FMG exam. And uh, keeping in mind the recent trend of questions, uh, I thought that we will do a short uh, revision of ophthalmic instruments. The different kinds of instruments that are used in ophthalmology for evaluation, that is examination instruments and also surgical instruments. Right. So let's just go through them. Let's look at this first question. What is this instrument used for? So we have the option of fundus examination, refraction, anterior segment evaluation and angle evaluation. What is this instrument used for? So tell me what is this instrument used for? Then we'll discuss this. Any idea? Correct. Good. This instrument is used for refraction. So what is this instrument? This instrument is a retinoscope. This instrument is a retinoscope. Okay. So this is used for evaluate. This is used for refraction. That is assessment of the refractive error of an individual. Now, how do we identify this instrument? See this instrument, this has a handle. It has a handle and on top of the handle, there is a head. But look at the head. The head is like slightly longish in shape and there is also a dial which is there here on the shaft right so this is what a retinoscope looks like so there is a head there's a handle on top of it there is a head the head is slightly elongated in shape and you have this and uh, this um, this dial here this is a retinoscope and though the name is actually retinoscope its use is for evaluate is not for uh, evaluation of fundus as many of you have told us it is refraction it is meant for assessment of the refractive error of an individual right so let's go to the next question now identify the instrument in this photograph so what is this instrument is it an operating microscope is it a USG A scan? Is it a keratometer or is it a slit lamp by microscope? What is this instrument? What is this instrument? Good. This is a slit lamp by microscope. This is a slit lamp by microscope. Now, what is a slit lamp by microscope used for? A slit lamp by microscope essentially helps us to look at the structures in the anterior segment. So this slit lamp by microscope is used for the evaluation of the anterior segment. Now, what do we mean by the anterior segment? I think all of you know anterior segment means all the structures which are in front of the crystalline lens, right? So it helps us to evaluate the anterior segment, but you can see up to the anterior one third of the vitreous cavity with this slit lamp by microscope. So the slit lamp by microscope helps us in anterior segment evaluation and also up to one anterior one third of the vitreous cavity you can see with this slit lamp. Now with this slit lamp if you use this additional lens so see there's a small lens kept here that's a 90D lens. Now if you use an additional lens that is this 90 diopter lens with the slit lamp then what do you what can you evaluate? Then with this, you can also evaluate the posterior segment. So actually, the slit lamp can be used for both anterior segment and posterior segment evaluation. It is just that for if you just look through the slit lamp, you will be able to see the anterior segment and up to the anterior one third of the vitreous cavity. But along with that, if I use this additional 90 diopter lens, then I also get to see the posterior. Segment. Right? Chal. Let's go to the next question. Identify the instrument given in this photograph. So what is this? Is it a packing meter? Is it a USG A scan? Is it a keratometer or is it a foropter? What is this? Slightly tough question. Maybe a picture that you may not have seen before. What is this? 
Correct. This is a four octal. So this is also used for refraction. That is evaluation of the refractive error. So this is a new instrument. So this is also used for assessment of refractive error. So see, you have seen these multiple circles. That there you, I mean, basically it rotates and multiple lenses are placed in front of the eye when the patient is actually looking at the vision chart, and then and and a rough assessment of the refractive error is made. So this is a four octal. Right. So previously we show we saw another instrument that is the retinoscope, and this is another instrument that is used, used in refraction. This is a new instrument, and this is used. This is called as four octal. Let's go to the next question. The instrument in this picture is used for what is this used for? Is it used for a duochrome test? Is it used for diplopia charting? Is it used for refining the axis and the power of the cylinder or is it used for visual acuity evaluation? What is this? So what is this instrument used for? Any idea? Also something which you may not be really knowing but something you can guess maybe. Correct. It is used for refining the axis and the power of the cylinder. Now let me tell you the name of this instrument. The name of this instrument is Jackson's Cross Cylinder. The name of this instrument is Jackson's cross cylinder and what it basically is is it's a combination of two cylinders which are perpendicular to each other and opposite in power. So see you have a minus 25 power here and a plus 0.25 sorry minus 0.25 power here and plus 0.25 power in one axis. So in one axis we have minus 0.25 in the other axis we have plus 0.25. Right in the same way, we can also have a point, 0.5 Jackson cylinder. So, if it, this is a 0.25 Jackson cylinder, you can also have a 0.5 Jackson cylinder where you will have minus 0.5 and plus 0.5, which are perpendicular to each other. Now, how do what is the use of this Jackson's cross cylinder? See, what, if, what we do with this is once we have finished our objective refraction, if we want to slightly confirm or refine the axis and the power of the cylindrical correction. Then we use this Jackson cylinder. It helps us to maybe slightly refine the axis and also adjust the power and arrive at the final correction that we want to give to the patient. So this is a Jackson's cross cylinder. It is a combination of a plus cylinder and minus cylinder of equal but opposite power. So it's a combination of two cylinders of opposite power which are of Opposite signs but equal power that is minus 0.25 and plus 0.25 or minus 0.5 plus 0.5 and these two are perpendicular to each other. It is used for refining the axis and the power of the cylinder. Okay, Chal. let's go to the next question but before that let me show you another thing. Can you tell me what is this used for if we if we have the same options duochrome, diplopia, axis of cylinder, visual acuity, evaluation. If we have the same options but we have this image then what will you answer? If we have this image but the same options as the previous question then correct this is the duochrome test. This is called as the duochrome test. So this is also something which we do at the end of our refraction that is we ask the patient whether the red the letters in red are better or whether the letters in green are better whether the letters in red are better or the letters in green are better correct this is used for refining your spherical correction. So the red better indicates that the patient is at the end of refraction slightly myopic. And if the green is better, then it means that the patient is slightly hypermetropic at the end of the refraction that you have given him. Right? So, if the red is better, that means that the patients are, at, with the correction, the patient has ended up becoming slightly myopic. And if it's green better, then we, we know that the patient has ended up becoming slightly hypermetropic. And generally, we want the red to be more better than the green in most cases. We want the red to be better than the green. In most cases. Okay, if both are, then we call it as duochrome balanced. That means it's fine. Duochrome balanced is, it's, is generally very difficult to achieve. But okay, if both are the same, that means that the patient is, it's, 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 that's the perfect level. But if at all something is better, it is the red which we want it to be better in most cases at the end. Correct? 
all are true about the instrument which is shown in this picture except it gives a stereoscopic view of the fundus it gives us a view up to the retinal periphery it is used if the media is hazy like a cataract and it gives a virtual and erect image what is this correct so this is what is incorrect that it gives a virtual and erect image this is wrong what it gives is it gives a real and inverted image i'll come back to this question first of all will you be able to tell me what is the name of this instrument what is the name of this instrument what is the name of this instrument correct this is the indirect ophthalmoscope so basically we have two ophthalmoscopes this one is that we saw in the picture this is the indirect ophthalmoscope and the other one that we have on this slide here this is our direct ophthalmoscope so see these are the instruments which are meant for fundus evaluation that is for evaluation of the posterior segment now the first instrument that we saw that was a retinoscope i think many of you confuse that with the ophthalmoscope with the direct ophthalmoscope so look at the picture of the direct ophthalmoscope here the direct ophthalmoscope also has a handle and a head but look at the head the head is kind of roundish and you also have a dial which is at the side so there is a handle on top of it there is a head and there is also a dial at the side this is a direct ophthalmoscope and the other one the instrument that you wear on the head and with this indirect ophthalmoscope you need an additional lens which is called as a 20 diopter lens now these instruments they are meant for fundus evaluation they are meant for fundus evaluation so ophthalmoscope is meant for fundus evaluation and the picture that you saw in the first question that is the retinoscope and that is actually meant for red refraction not for fundus evaluation now let us look at the important points to remember about the two ophthalmoscopes see the direct ophthalmoscope it gives you a high magnification but a very very limited field of view means the field of view is is limited to the central part of the retina here the magnification is high but the view is limited to the center of the retina indirect ophthalmoscope is exactly the opposite of this in the sense that it gives you less magnification but it allows you to view up to the retinal periphery meaning the field of view is much more with an indirect ophthalmoscope so with an indirect ophthalmoscope the magnification is less but the field of view is more with a direct ophthalmoscope the mag is more but it allows you to view only up to the center now with an with a direct ophthalmoscope here we have a virtual image which is erect so virtual and erect image is for direct ophthalmoscope whereas for indirect ophthalmoscope we have a real image which is also an inverted image real and inverted image right so now if we go back to this see view up to the retinal periphery this is correct now here this indirect ophthalmoscope this has two advantages one it is useful in hazy media that is if you have a hazy refractive media like a cataract then it's very useful to evaluate the fundus and another thing is it gives a very good perception of depth which is called as stereoscopic view and both these are not there with a direct ophthalmoscope now with a direct ophthalmoscope if the media is hazy it's not useful and it also does not give good depth perception so it is non stereoscopic So see, stereoscopic view of the fundus useful in hazy media. All this is correct. So what is wrong is that it gives you a virtual and erect image. So virtual and erect image is seen with the direct ophthalmoscope. Is seen with the direct ophthalmoscope. With the indirect ophthalmoscope, we have a real image which is inverted. So real and inverted image with our indirect ophthalmoscope. Right? Sure. Let's go to the next question. what is the procedure that is shown in the photograph here what is this is it a gonioscopy keratometry a planation tonometry or is it a corneal scraping that is being shown here what is this procedure very good this is aplanation tonometry which is meant for the evaluation of the fundus sorry meant for evaluation of intraocular pressure this is for iop evaluation this is 
IO applanation tonometry, which is meant for IOP evaluation. So let me just show you a couple of other photographs. So see, this is our Goldman applanation tonometer. This is the Goldman applanation tonometer. And this Goldman applanation tonometer is actually attached to your slit lamp. So it's not portable, meaning you cannot carry it around. At this point, it is attached to your slit lamp. Now, the patient is made to sit on the slit lamp and after the cornea has been anesthetized, see the tear film is stained with fluorescein dye. So, you use fluorescein dye to stain the tear film and you put on the cobalt blue filter of the slit lamp. So, that's why the light is blue. Right? So, the tear film is stained with fluorescein dye and you put on the cobalt blue filter of the slit lamp and see this, this, this is the applanation by prism which we have to make touch on the surface of the cornea. So, first of all, the corneal surface has to be anesthetized. Then you have to stain the tear film with fluorescein dye, put on the cobalt blue filter and make this applanation by prism touch the surface of the cornea. And when you do that, you get to see this is your examiner's view. So, see, what are we seeing in this examiner's view? You get to see two semicircles like this. And the reading has to be taken when these two semicircles are just touching each other. So, these two semicircles that you see, these are called as your applanation tonometry myers. These are called as your applanation tonometry myers. And you are supposed to take the reading when these two are just touching each other. Okay. So, this is applanation tonometry, which is meant for IUP evaluation, which of course has particular importance in group. Okay. Let's go to the next question. What is the procedure that is shown in this photograph? What is this? Is it gonioscopy? Is it keratometry? Is it applanation tonometry or is it corneal scraping? What is this that's shown in this picture? Very good. This is gonioscopy. So, this is also something which we do on the slit lamp. So, you instill anesthetic on the cornea and you look through this gonioscope. So, this lens that you have here, this is called as a gonio lens. So, the gonio lens is needed. You have to insert the gonio lens in the patient's eye. It has to touch the surface of the cornea. So, the cornea has to be anesthetized. Then the gonio lens is placed on the cornea and you look through the slip lamp. And what is the use of gonioscopy? The use of gonioscopy is for evaluation of the angle of the anterior chamber. This is used for evaluation of angle of anterior chamber. Now, where do we need to evaluate the angle of anterior chamber? The importance of evaluation of angle of anterior chamber is in glaucoma. Why? Because see, in glaucoma, the two major classifications of glaucoma is angle closure glaucoma and open angle glaucoma. So that's why it is important to evaluate the angle because most of glaucomas are due to outflow obstruction. So in order to know whether it is an angle closure glaucoma or it's an open angle glaucoma, we need to evaluate the angle with the help of gonioscopy. So we use this lens which is called as a gonioscope or a gonio lens and we have to look through the slit lamp. This is gonioscope. So see, this is, this is your, these are your gonioscopes or these are your gonio lenses. These are the gonio lenses or these are the gonioscopes and this is your view of the angle. So, this is what the angle of anterior chamber looks like when you look through the gonio. Okay, let's go to the next question. Identify the instrument that is given in this picture. So, this, uh, this is... Is this an eye speculum? Is it a collision scoop? Is it a collision clamp? Or is it an evisceration spatula? What is this? Yeah, this is a collision clamp. This is a collision clamp. Now see, let us see what the collision clamp is used for. This is used for incision and curettage. That is I and C, incision and curettage. That we do for a collision, right? So what we do is with this collision clamp, you fix the collision. You fix the collision and by tightening the screw, you also achieve a certain level of hemostasis. 
and then you make an incision on the calaision and then you use this instrument this is your calaision scoop so with this calaision scoop you scoop out everything all the collection that is there inside that calaision and you also break all the septa so this is the calaision clamp which is meant to fix the calaision and also to ensure hemostasis then we make an incision on the calaision and with this small scoop like instrument you remove all the material that is there inside the calaision and you also break all the septa so that is called as inc that is incision and curettage in a calaision okay Chale. next question identify this blade what is the name of this blade Okay, so there is always confusion when I put up this question. Okay, so this is not the keratom blade. Huh? This is the crescent blade. Now, I will tell you what is the difference. Look at this blade. Look at the front end of this blade. It is rounded like this, right? It is rounded like this. This is a crescent blade. And where is this used basically? This crescent blade, this is used for creating the corneoscleral tunnel incision in an SICS, that is small incision cataracts. So here we have to create a sclerocorneal tunnel incision. So in an SICS, we need to create a sclerocorneal tunnel incision. So we make an incision first in the sclera. Then from the sclera into the cornea, you have to create a tunnel. So the creation of this sclerocorneal tunnel incision, which is done in SICS, that is small incision cataract surgery. Small incision cataract surgery. So this is the crescent blade which is used for the creation of this sclerocorneal tunnel incision in SICS that is small incision cataract. Now let me show you the picture of the keratome blade. This is your keratome blade. So look at this blade. This blade is sharp edged like this. See, this is what this blade looks like. This is a sharp edged blade and see this is used for your creation of the clear corneal incision. So, in phaco emulsification, we are creating a clear corneal incision to enter through the cornea into the anterior chamber. So, the creation of this clear corneal incision, this is done in phaco emulsification cataract surgery. This is the clear corneal incision in phaco emulsification cataract surgery. This is done using this keratome blade. So now I think you will uh, you will not have confusion with this. This blade is sharp edged, whereas this is like it is it is rounded. The front end of this blade is rounded. Okay. So these are the two different types of blades. One is for the tunnel incision in SICS, and the other is for the clear corneal incision that is done in fake. Okay. So now let's look at the next. Identify this step in cataract surgery. So, what is this step in cataract surgery? Will you tell me? Is it hydro dissection? Is it phaco emulsification? Is it IOL insertion or is it capsulorexis? So, what is this? Is it hydro dissection? Correct. This is capsulorexis. Correct. This is capsulorexis that is creating a circular opening in the anterior capsule of the lens. It is creation of a circular opening in the anterior capsule of the lens. And see, look at the instrument that is used here. The instrument that is being used here, this is called as the capsulorexis forceps. So, if you look at the front end of the forceps, it is an L-shaped forceps like this. But, look at the tip of the forceps. The tip of the forceps is bent down. Now, why is it bent down? Because see, you need to pick up the capsule. You need to hold the capsule. So, that's why the front end of the capsule has to be bent down like this. So, it is an basically a simple L-shaped forcep only. But the front end of the capsule is, sorry, the front end of that forcep is bent down, which enables you to pick up the capsule so that you can rotate it. So, this is the capsular excess forceps that is used for the creation of the circular opening in the anterior capsule in cataract surgery. That's called as capsule. Okay, so look at the next picture. Tell me what is this step in cataract surgery called? Is it hydro dissection? Is it phaco emulsification? Is it IOL insertion or capsular excess? What is this? What is this step called? Correct, very good. This is called as hydro dissection. So, what is being done here? See, see this cannula, it is taken beneath this capsular excess margin. This is a cannula which is attached to a fluid-filled syringe. 
This is a cannula that is attached to the fluid filled syringe. It is being taken beneath the capsular axis and you inject a jet of fluid. And what this does is it separates the lens fibers from the capsule. So the lens fibers they separate from the capsule by this by the injection of this fluid and hence the name hydrodissection. So this is a bent cannula which is attached to a fluid filled syringe and then you take this beneath the capsular excess margin and when you inject the fluid then this jet of fluid separates the lens fibers from the lens capsule and that's called as hydrodissection. Okay, let's go to the next picture. What is this instrument called? Is it a phaco emulsification probe? Is it, is, is it an irrigation cannula? Is it an IOL injector or is it an irrigating vectors? What is this? Correct. This is the phaco probe. This is the phaco emulsification probe. This phaco probe, it has an ultrasound tip. This phaco probe, na, it has an ultrasound tip and it is attached to vacuum. See this? It has these pipes, they are attached to a vacuum pump. They are attached to a vacuum pump. So what this basically does is, this phaco probe, it helps to emulsify and aspirate the lens nucleus. It emulsifies and aspirates the lens nucleus. So necessarily, you have a very small incision, but through that this phaco probe goes inside and removes the entire nucleus which is much bigger. So this emulsifies and aspirates the lens nucleus. That is its function and this is called as the phaco probe. It has an ultrasound tip and it has a vacuum which is attached to it so that ultrasound tip it is going to emulsify this lens nucleus and then the job of sucking it is done by this vacuum. This is your phaco probe. Now, some of you have confused it with another instrument. Let me show that to you. Now, what is this instrument called? Is it a phaco probe? Is it an irrigation cannula? Is it an irrigating vectis or is it an IOL injector? Was, what is this? This is an irrigating vectis. Now, what is the irrigating vectis used for? See, the front end of it is, is, is shaped like a spoon, right? So, what this does is, this is used for nucleus removal or nucleus delivery in SICS. So, in SICS, it's a manual surgery. So, it is a manual cataract surgery, small incision cataract surgery. So, here, this instrument that is the vectis, it is see, taken beneath the nucleus and then you pull it out through the incision like this. So, in phaco emulsification, the nucleus is emulsified and it is aspirated by the phaco probe, where which is, and that's an equipment based surgery, but SICS is a manual surgery. Here, see what we are doing is we are taking this, this instrument, the front end of which is like a spoon, and then you take it beneath the lens nucleus and you pull up, put, pick up the lens nucleus and you drag it out through this incision. This is the nucleus delivery in SICS. So, this is your irrigating vectors. Right? Now, what is this instrument called as? What is this instrument called as? Any idea? Is it a lacrimal probe? Is it an IOL dialer? Is it a blade holder or a diamond blade? What is this? This instrument is an IOL dialer. It's an IOL dialer. Or it is also called as a Sinsky's hook. This is a Sinsky's hook or an IOL dialer. And see the front end of it is L shaped like this with a short bend. So after you have inserted the IOL, this is used to hold the IOL and rotate it into the capsular bag. So this is an IOL dialer or a Sinsky's hook. So the front end of it is like L shape, but the tip of it is again bent down. Why? Because you need to hold the lens to rotate it and to place it in the IOL bag into the capsular bag. Now see, this is this is what the front end of it looks like. So it's L shaped and the front end is bent down. Like this. Okay. So this is the last question that I have in today's session. Identify this IOL. What do we call this IOL? Is it a monofocal IOL? Is it a multifocal IOL, toric IOL or a multifocal toric IOL? This is a multifocal IOL. This is a multifocal IOL. Now, let me just show you a few images. Then it is going to become a little bit clear to you. So, see, this is a monofocal IOL. 
Now, what do we mean by a monofocal IOL? A monofocal IOL means that it has only one focus or one power, which is the distance power. So, the power for distance is incorporated in this IOL and the power for near is not incorporated. So, the patient will need glasses for near vision. This is the most regular kind of IOL that we have. So, here the distance power is there in the lens, the IOL. But it is monofocal, meaning it is focused only for distance and for near the patient will need to wear glasses. Now, if you look at this picture, this is a multifocal IOL. Now, see, how do you identify? See, it has multiple powers and see, it will have these rings. See, it has these circular round round rings that are there. So, this means that it's a multifocal IOL and in a multifocal IOL because these multiple rings are present this tells you that it is multifocal. Now see this means that it has multiple powers that is the power for distance and for near is both there in this lens only. So both the powers are there in this lens only and that is why it is called as multifocal. So here there is no need for glasses. There is no need for glasses for glasses for both distance and near. Because it is multifocal. Here the distance power and the near power are both there in the IOL itself. Right. So this is the more premium IOL. Now there is something which is called as a toric IOL. Now what is meant by a toric IOL? A toric IOL has an incorporated cylindrical power also. Now, why do we need an incorporated cylindrical power? Now, this is meant to correct a pre-existing corneal astigmatism. So, see, the patient who is undergoing a cataract surgery has a pre-existing corneal astigmatism. So, we take this opportunity to correct that pre-existing corneal astigmatism by incorporating that cylindrical power also in the eye well. So, see here, look at this. Look at this line here. This indicates the axis of the cylinder. So, see, the first one is a monofocal IOL with an incorporated cylinder. So, this we will call as monofocal toric. So, this is a monofocal toric IOL. That is a monofocal IOL which has an added cylinder. And the second one, it's a multifocal IOL as you can see. So, it's a multifocal IOL with an incorporated toricity. So, we will call this as a multifocal toric IOL. So, these are the questions that I had for a quick revision of FMG MCQs today. So, I hope this short session has been useful to you. And for those of you who are still not a part of our platform, I would say that please do uh, download the Unacademy app. And for start, if you want to start attending our special classes, you can use my code that is Doc Sudha. And if you want to become a part of our Plus platform, there you have access to both our live and recorded classes and the opportunity to learn from some of the best educators for medical exams in our country. Do enroll for the Plus subscription and for that also you can use the code Doc Sudha. And if you want to have the best of both an academy and prep ladder, then you can enroll for the iconic subscription. And just to tell you a little bit about the, the special class features, our special classes, please, you can uh, download the app and you can start watching the special classes. We, are, have, we have interactive live classes, polls for the learners. And also one of the very unique features is the raise hand feature that we have, which allows the learners to talk to educators in the live classes and get the doubts cleared and resolved in real time. Apart from this, our Plus platform, it has a very good uh, and updated and highly effective QBank where we have more than 25,000 high yield clinical questions based on the latest exam patterns along with detailed uh, explanations and this is going to help you assess yourself once you're done with your preparation. So this is about the NEED PG combat which is going to come up on the 28th of November at 5 p.m. And you can enroll in this and there are lots of scholarships to be won for this. So also there is, look. I, will, I would encourage you to have a look at this free test calendar for medical PG where you have on different days of the week different kinds of tests that are curated for you. And once again, all these, they help to assess yourself once you are done with your preparation.
and on our plus platform we are having um, batches which are curated exactly to the kind of exam that you want to prepare for so there is an fmg focus fmg 2022 comprehensive batch which is meant for students who are preparing for next year's fmg exam for neat pg 2022 batch there is a fast track revision batch also along with mcqs so uh, this is how you enroll for the NEET PG subscription. There is a plus subscription as well as the iconic subscription. And um, this is an opportunity for you to learn with some of the best educators. And, and the good part is you have access to both the live and recorded classes and the opportunity to compete in live tests and quizzes. So thank you everybody for being a part of this short session and hoping you to see on the platform on the plus platform also very very soon so bye bye and good day